Hi everybody, my name is Bron J. Pierce. Uh, I am not very good at documenting things. Uh, I like to make a lot of stuff, but I don't do a great job of uh, showing the world what I make. And so this was one of the first things I've, I'm gonna document. Um, there's a couple guys out there, and girls, that are making some filters. There's a really, really big community for the laser engraving uh, and laser cutting uh, field. Whether you're using a big gantry style laser or like myself, I started on a K40, which a lot of you probably know, it's a little uh, Chinese blue, I have the blue one. Uh, I paid like $80 for mine used and then I replaced the, uh, the tube because that was broken. So basically I got $180 invested and then I, I uh, had a K40 machine. Um, when I first started, uh, obviously you need to vent the smoke because what I do is we do some uh, laser engraving um, and so it's powder coated metal. Uh, you have to get rid of the exhaust because it's really, really nasty. The first time I did it, if anybody's out there, if you if you do this, the first time I did it, I did not vent it out very properly. And almost within 10 or 15 minutes, I got a headache and I shut the machine down immediately. So please, please, please do not do that. Uh, there's some nasty, nasty volatile organic compounds that, volatile, yeah, VOCs. Um, and it's really, really, really bad for you. So. Um, what I did immediately was I bought this little, uh, this is a boat pump, so I'm in South Florida, we got a lot of boats down here, uh, it's a 12 volt bolt pump, um, and then I put this on the K40 machine, um, and I was just venting the air outside. Problem is, some of the other shops in the area were smelling it, it's obviously not good for the environment, it's just a not, good pra not a good practice to do. Um, so I started looking at some air filters, there's a company called Sentry that makes some pretty good air filters, there's quite a few companies out there. Um, but they're really expensive and we didn't have the capital to invest in it. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna make one myself. Uh, so what I've got here is my first take at it. And uh, it's similar to what I've seen a couple other people are doing. Um, it's not a great system. And I, I've actually got a better one I'm gonna show you in a minute. Uh, what I did was basically you take four inch duct hose. Um, so I, I have completely ripped apart my filter that existed. Uh, the, the first one I made was wood cut from Home Depot, and then I tried cutting everything and putting it together. Tolerances were really, really bad. Machine, uh, the, the wood didn't go together properly. It held, so I used it for a little while, um, but the, it just wasn't working properly. So I ended up um, sending our, my design, uh, which I'm gonna try to pull up into one of these corners, whatever. Um, I built it in CAD, and then I sent the file to a um, company to cut it out on a CNC machine. That's where this is from, so this is like, perfectly put together. I mean, it was beautiful. And I was really excited. I have even some 3D printed brackets to hold the filters. So, I mean, that did a great job. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, and so, so what basically any filter is, is a series of filters. <laughs> or what any uh, fume extractor is, a series of filters going from a you know large particle to a finer particle down to gases. And so, um, originally on this, I had just a, a mesh filter that was laying on top. You can see there's kind of like these cutouts. Um, and so I put in some mesh inside of there and that was kind of like the, the pre-filter if you would. These are HEPA filters. These are just off the shelf HEPA filters for, you know, a household air purifier. Um, they're absolutely disgusting. So I probably should be wearing gloves. And if you are watching me, I'm going to make sure I'm washing my hands as soon as I'm done, especially cause I'm filming during the coronavirus times. That's why I've got time to do this. Um, and so anyway, so this, this was this part right here is really, really well made. Um, and then I had the first rendition that I made of this. I had, let me show you what I got here. I bought, I bought some uh, charcoal, activated car carbon, activated charcoal. Uh, this whole bucket right here, you can barely see in here. That's all this is. It's just literally activated charcoal. And so I had a filter that was uh, about four inches wide. Um, and it was this profile. So this large by four inches and couldn't get it to work. Couldn't get to work. Kept trying, 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 trying different things. Um, I ended up getting it down to this size, which this is about an inch wide. Um, all I did was I took an off the shelf uh, household air filter that you use for central AC, cut out the fabric and then I put different layers of uh, screen. And the screen I used was basically this stuff, uh, wire mesh. Um, there's different different um, grades that you can use. And so I went from finer to coarser, coarser to finer. Um, 
and so I built my own air air filter. Uh, this is garbage, just so you know. So don't do this. <laughs> um, there's better ways to do it if you want, but I strongly advise to follow if, if you want. The best part of this video is gonna be when I show you the other filter. I just wanted to see where, where I came from. Um, this thing wasn't pulling air through the four inch and it barely pulled air through here. So this uh, this was the original blower that I, I bought and this thing's rated for, I think it's like, it doesn't say, I think it's rated for um, 600 CFM. It's a uh, 190 watts, 1.6 amps. So it's, a, I mean, if I turn it on, this thing is a, a beast of a blower, but it is, very much a ventilation blower. It's a low pressure blower. Um, I thought that that was a problem. I thought that that's why I wasn't getting any circulation. So I bought this thing, and this thing is also a beast of a blower. This is some, uh, I think it's a German made, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, but either way, this thing was like 170 bucks, and as you can see, this fit right into there, and it did a great job of blowing. The problem, these aren't meant for blowing when you're, or these aren't meant for, for pulling air through ducting and pulling air through filters. This is a circulation fan. This is a, a low pressure. So if you wanted to circulate air in your garage, or if you wanted to extract air from your garage, but not pulling it through anything, just getting air from one place to another without blowing it through filters, these things are amazing. If you want to pull it through ducting, if you want to pull it through a filter, this thing is horrible. So please don't use this. Um, so yeah, so that's basically the setup that I had. Uh, I've, I probably spent way too much money doing this. Um, what I'm going to show you now is my current air filtration system. Um, oh, and you can see I use these little locks to lock everything in place. Like I, I went above and beyond to make this thing perfect when I actually used uh, the CNC. And, and these are all uh, just foam, adhesive foam pads that I used, everything. So. Uh, all right, everybody, so what I've got here is a combination of some old parts and new parts, but uh, I just want to go through what my new filter is and why it is leaps and bounds, like significantly better. Um, just one thing to know is when I was running my old filter, it was being ported out of our shop. Occasionally, even with it ported out, you could still smell it because um, the filter, this filter, this top, this top bit, it's not as concentrated because gravity's pulling the, the carbon down and that thing's not great, made great. So what I strongly suggest you do is not make your own filter. They are more expensive sometimes, um, but they're just quality, quality machine or products. So what I've got here, this is basically the heart of my machine. This is um, the Bofa AD350 filter. And I don't care who you use, there's a lot of different companies out there. Um, I just found that a lot of people use this. There's, so I, I do a lot of 3D printing as well. And there's a company by the name of Matter Hackers. They sell this filter. Uh, they also sell the entire machine. Now, if you want to buy the machine, they're $2,000, and I'm sure they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. Um, what I did is I didn't want to spend two grand because I, I kind of understand what's going into it. Um, is I bought this, and I think this was 300, and I believe this was 100. So all in, this was a 400 bucks, and then this this uh, blower right here was 80 dollars. So I'm at 480. So about 25% the price. Um, I decided not to stick with my traditional idea or the original idea of making all the filters and this and that because the company is, it's a British company and they have put tons and tons of R&D and lots of professionals that are in the air filtration business and engineers and scientists that have made this. There's like 15 different types of charcoal that they say is in this. Um, it, it, this is the, the best option in my opinion. Again, Bofa or other companies. And literally, so so as you can see, this is the pre-filter. Um, I, I don't know whether this is a HEPA or not, but literally each one of these pleats, each one of these pleats runs all the way back and forth. So the surface area you're getting with this is way, way, way higher than what you're getting with this. Although this does run back and forth, it's not nearly as large, nor is it as deep. I'm um, gonna drop that down there. So that's the pre-filter. This is about a hundred bucks. Inside here, it's a little hard to see, but there's an additional filter. I believe that this is the HEPA filter. Um, I haven't cut this open. When, I'm, when this thing dies, I'm probably gonna cut it open out of curiosity. 
but it was three hundred dollars, so I don't want to do it now. Um, my assumption is the HEPA filter is probably somewhere about this thick, and then the carbon. So this thing weighs about fifteen pounds. Now, their design of their machine allows for when the HEPA filter is sitting in here, you suck air in here or fumes or exhaust, whatever it is, and as it comes up, it collects all the large particles. When you turn off the machine, some of the large particles will actually fall out. Now, I haven't run this a ton, so there's just sawdust in mine. Um, but yeah, so supposedly that's the idea. So that's the reason I, I stuck with this original idea. Um, now, this right here was the original $150 Beast Monster Blower. Amazing, as I mentioned, not designed for pulling through air. This thing right here, it's only a 200 CFM, cubic feet per minute. Um, and when you put it through all this filter, it's probably around, I don't know, 150. I don't have a CFM gauge and I don't actually care because I just wanna make sure it works. But this, although it's 200 CFM and this is a 800 CFM, once it goes through everything, uh, this is basically what I'm using to suck up the exhaust. I got a 3D printed piece here as well. Um, so the, the, the amount of flow that's being pulled from here with this new blower versus what was being pulled through with this old blower is way, way more. And way more carbon, way more filter, just everything. It's so much better. So if you do one thing, if there's one thing that you listen to this video, don't buy, and they're called axial blowers. So axial meaning they spin like that. This is a centrifugal blower. You can barely, you can't see it, but uh, it's a very, very different style fan. This has a the ability to pull high pressure, and this does not. So if you do one thing, just stick with this fan. Um, yeah, so literally all I do with this blower, if I ever need to replace, well, I say if, when I need to replace it, this just fits inside there. This right here is, uh, I'm gonna share the design, I built this in 3D as well. Um, but literally there's a 3 8 inch thick, one inch wide foam pad that I've got around here. This sits on top of that, on top of the foam at least. And then that goes on there. Now, I keep this venting in my shop and I can't smell anything. Um, I know that there's a couple people who have asked, sorry, it's hot, I'm in South Florida. Um, there's a couple people who have asked about VOC sensors. Um, there's like a $3 VOC sensor that I can hook up to an Arduino. I've thought about doing it. I'm not going to um, because the guy who I spoke to about this filter cartridge told me that you don't need one. Their machine has one. They're selling it for $2,000. Um, Really, all you're gonna do is occasionally check to make sure that the flow is good. If the flow drops, and it should last six, depending on use, maybe six or eight months, just replace the, the filter. And, and obviously you'll replace the pre-filter first. Um, but yeah, I, I have tested all of these seams with, I just took a cigarette, and while this thing's running with a load, uh, I literally just ran around this. I even put something over top of this, and I ran around with a cigarette just to make sure that there was no fumes being sucked in from here. Uh, if you want, you could build a latch that goes from here to here, but the pressure that it's creating, like the internal pressure or vacuum that it's creating is way more than what you need because as I mentioned, there's a foam, uh, there's a foam piece here and there's a foam piece there. And so, yeah, we've been running it. We ran it inside our shop and we haven't had any issues. Uh, you can't smell anything. The, the guy who sold it, um, uh, those, those, I spoke to about the actual filter. He told me he would vent. Well, this is what he said. He said he would vent the exhaust from a laser engraving machine next to his baby's room just because he feels that confident that these filters are that good. Um, yeah, so just wanted to give you guys some thoughts. Um, at one point, I was thinking about cutting out, basically laying out all the different components that are used for this filter, which literally there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of wood, and, and then some. Um, but if you don't have a proper wood cutting shop like myself. I was usually literally using a circular saw and clamping wood. Th this box 
if you have a shop, probably takes you a half hour or 45 minutes to build. It took me like four hours to build and it was miserable. That's why I originally sent the one to the CNC company. Um, I was thinking about making like 10 of these kits and then you would just buy this and this on your own and I would ship the kit and it'd come in a box about that big. I'm actually not doing it to make money. I just want to, you know, to have a, a way for people to be able to buy these. So probably would be like 40 or 50 bucks for the wood, something like that. So yeah, uh, again, my name is Brandon J. Pierce and uh, I hope this message helps some people or this video helps some people. Thanks.